What's up, y'all? Welcome back in the shop. I got a few more things I'm doing to the tow truck here, and uh, I was gonna update y'all and uh, kind of go over what we got accomplished in the last couple weeks. It's been uh, kind of slow. We're doing a lot of different stuff here at the shop and different things like that, new ownership and everything. So uh, I'm still whittling away at this project, and uh, let's get right into this and show you what I got going. All right, starters, overload springs. Now, I had debated on this for a while, and I was gonna just put airbags on it. My frame with the C-channel inside is gonna be uh, plenty strong enough to fit. And uh, an airbag underneath here and frame not crinkle. I feel like that's gonna be plenty strong enough there. But, I came in contact with a set of heavy duty trailer leaf springs. Uh, they're like rated for like 4,000 pounds a piece, I do believe. So 8,000 between the two. They came off a pull behind travel trailer. Just so happens my neighbor had one and uh, basically sold them to me for next to nothing. I just had to go and take them off. Well, this is what I got my overload springs off of. The single axle travel trailer. See, I, I would have recorded, but I uh, came here at night because this uh, camper's full of bees and I was cutting these off with the grinder and I didn't want to arouse the bees too much. But uh, you can see I just cut the leaf springs uh, shackles right off. Took the whole axle. And uh, there's a bee right there. Yep, all them bees, There's thousands of them in this thing. So I was trying to avoid uh, getting all stung up, so I came at night and did it. This is the axle they were attached to. I get my shadow out of here. And yes, I know I've already taken them off. Should have showed it with them on, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Uh, There's six leaf stack, first side. And I believe those are probably rated for maybe 8,000 if you had the two together. Here's the terribly rusty U-bolts that uh, have got rained on and now are rusty again. But you can see the threads are almost completely gone right there. And they still come off. Uh, good tip on something like this if you don't have uh, heat nearby, which uh, I was out of oxygen here at the house. Take a ball peen hammer, whack it several times if they won't break free. Works about 85, 90% of the time. Just flexes it enough to crack that rust line and it'll come right off. But uh, yeah. So you can kind of see how I got this set up here. Got a piece of quarter inch. Uh, I think it's three by five or three by four angle iron. Uh, notch it out. It goes over top of the frame in there and I, when I pull the box off I'm probably gonna weld a couple more beads right up on top of the frame, but uh, it's plenty strong enough right now as it is You see I got two grease zerks uh, They used to like doing that on these older type leaf spring bolts uh, It's a pretty good idea. I think now they just use rubber or pins or bushings or plastic or nylon or whatever, but Grease seems to work pretty well, and I'm glad I have it that way on these. But, uh, same thing on this side. Angle iron, weld it all in. See, it's welded on this side, too. Pretty good beads going there. Uh, what I got here in the center, I got a piece of three-inch box beam, and I notched it out and welded it to a plate on the bottom, and then the plate is welded to the plate on top of the leaf springs. Uh, you can see in here, I got like a half inch thick piece of rubber. I want to get some polyurethane rubber, like the stuff they make sway bar bushings out of. That's just regular like neoprene rubber. It's a little bit soft, but uh, definitely takes the, the blunt of the hit. If you hit a pretty good bump in the overload spring, just barely touches the top of the spring. I rode around in a couple days 
without that rubber in there. Every time I hit a bump, kind of sounds like a vehicle when the sway bar links are going out. More annoying than problematic, but I wanted to eliminate that. And I hope to get some polyurethane rubber and put underneath there. And uh, it's got a hole in the center that the tie bolt fits down into. Actually, the metal plate has on the bottom here has a hole in it as well. Gives it plenty of cushion room. And uh, that works out pretty well. And uh, I'm still planning on putting airbags on it. More for the fact just so when I have an empty truck with no trailer, I can put a little air on it and lift it up. And uh, it'll ride just like a regular three-quarter ton truck does. And uh, I won't have to worry about the overload spring hitting on there and feeling like a one-ton truck every time I hit a little bump. And uh, when I put some weight on it or put a car on the back or have my trailer on it or whatnot, I can let a little air out of the bag and uh, then it'll sit on the overload spring and it'll ride like a one ton, but you won't know the difference because it's got weight to compensate for that extra spring tension. And uh, it's gonna work out pretty well. I definitely do need to get some, I added a leaf I think I mentioned that in a previous video. I added a leaf. Uh, you can see the different color leaf uh, in a regular stock leaf spring stack. And I gotta get a new bracket there to hold that. Uh, not that I really need one, but it's probably a good idea. But uh, I kind of changed my mind. I know I mentioned in a previous build video of this that I was gonna put three by three angle iron across the bottom of the frame. And uh, I changed my mind on that more for the simple fact that I didn't want to cut out the stock leaf spring bracket and uh, redo that and it's all pinned in and everything. And uh, so what I'm gonna do, take a piece of two and a half by two and a half box beam, quarter inch thick, same thickness or as this, or same width as this frame already is, notch it so it's, from this point here up to about the front cab mount, it's gonna be angle, so I'm just gonna cut half the box out. Weld it directly to the frame, and it's gonna run straight along here, go underneath this bracket, and run all the way up to just behind the airbag and be at a, like a 45 degree angle, and then go up and weld straight to the frame. And uh, in doing that, I'm basically building like a truss that's uh, 16 inches tall from top of the frame down to the bottom of the box beam. And uh, it'll be a lot stronger than just an angle iron. And uh, I'm gonna put a couple pieces, probably angle them at 45s, probably one here and one here to kind of complete that truss type structure. And uh, that'll definitely make the frame so strong you will never bend it. You'll snap the rear axle in two before the frame bends, which is not that I want to snap the, snap the rear axle, but I want that frame as strong as possible. And uh, I've also added some weight on the front. Yeah, look at this nasty cab. That's going to get a lot of sheet metal and body work done to it. I got big, big plans for making this truck really nice. And uh, it's kind of coming together slow, but sure. But, uh, but I've added weight to the front. I'll show you here. This is what I got, and it's gonna be kind of hard to see. The plate on the bottom is inch and a quarter thick, 14 inches from front to back, 32 inches wide, weighs about 140 pounds by itself. And these plates that are all welded up here, I got four on each side. If y'all know what those are, <laughs> you're welcome to converse in the comments about it. But uh, I got a friend who hooked me up with them. And uh, yeah, but uh, those weigh about 23 pounds a piece. Add it all together and that comes out to about 320. And uh, I may have to add four more, which will bring it up about another 100 pounds. But uh, as of now, this seems to be working out pretty well. It balances the truck out pretty good. And uh, you can see I got this bolted up there to the frame, bolted to the ranch hand, bolt right here for the ranch hand, and then another bolt up top for the ranch hand. So it's all basically tied together. Three bolts to the frame, one bolt ties the two together. And uh, my beautiful stick welds 
I love that old stick welder. Got three on the bottom and then three up here on the top. Should be plenty to hold that up there. Uh, another thing I did is uh, after some trouble of torching out the torsion key bolts, I, because uh, I wanted to raise the front just a little bit because the 320 pounds pulled it down. So I wanted to tighten up the torsion keys and I snapped a bolt and I had to torch both of them out and it became a real big mess. But long story short, I uh, torched them all out, put new bolts in, cranked it up, leveled it all out. So the truck looks perfectly level, even with an extra 320 pounds on the front. So it's worked out pretty well. And uh, I gotta see about getting some box beam and fixing that up. and. I'm gonna put them airbags on. I gotta do a little frame structure, uh, like a little angle piece right above the airbag to keep the frame from rolling in on the bottom just cause it's C-channel and uh, all that. And uh, it's coming right along. I can't wait to get this to the house and get the box off and get some rust prep going and get a good coat of sealer on the frame. I'm probably gonna go with just old fashioned tar and uh, thin it out a little bit so it's more paintable and uh, basically like an undercoating on the whole entire frame rear axle springs everything on the front is all going to get a good rust emitting black paint and uh, i have yet to find a good paint if you know of any or a good quality brand if you're into that type of work hit me up in the comments let me know i'd love to get some tips on what kind of paint to use or uh, good rust treatment tips too as well so just let me know in the comments, and I sure do appreciate you watching. And uh, there will always be more videos coming up. We'll see what's going on next Friday. Until next time. And uh, as always, subscribe if you like my content. Follow me on Facebook as well. Thumbs up, always is appreciated. Till next time.